world's largest democracy is witnessing spectacular elections. With polling stretched over nine phases, Rajya Sabha TV brings you all the election updates and India votes. I'm Smriti Rastogi and before we get started with the bulletin, a quick look at the top headlines. Second phase of Lok Sabha polls to be held in four northeastern states, polling in Mizoram's lone seat on April 11th. Campaigning for third phase of polling ends, Congress and BJP stalwarts address rallies in the final hours. Tussle between Mamta Banerjee and Election Commission intensifies. EC threatens to suspend polls if its order is not complied with. And Congress ends weeks of speculation. Fields local candidate Ajay Rai against BJP's Narendra Modi in Varanasi. India will vote in the second phase of Lok Sabha elections tomorrow. As many as six seats are going to polls on Wednesday, the six constituencies fall in the northeastern states of Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya and Nagaland. Here is a look at the preparations and what's all at stake in the second phase of polls. After a successful first phase of voting for six seats in Assam and Tripura, which was largely peaceful on Monday, the election commission is hoping to continue the good show in the second phase as well. This time the focus shifts to four other northeastern states, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya and Nagaland. In this phase, two seats each in Arunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya will go to vote and one each in the other two states. Among these four states, Arunachal Pradesh will also vote for a new assembly on Tuesday. 49 seats out of the 60 assembly seats will vote on the same day. The two seats, Western and Eastern parliamentary constituencies, will witness a multi-cornered contest among Congress, BJP, NCP, PPA and Independents. Among the eight candidates in the Western seat are Congress nominee and sitting MP Takam Sanjoy locking horns with former MP Kiran Rijiju, a BJP nominee. In the Eastern parliamentary seat, Union Minister of State for Minority Affairs Ninong Ering of Congress is contesting against BJP nominee Tapir Gao and Wangman Lowangcha on the People's Party of Arunachal ticket. Both the Lok Sabha seats have been won by the Congress since 1975, but for 2004 when it was won by the BJP for the first time. In Meghalaya, two more seats are up for grabs on Tuesday. More than 15 lakh voters will decide the fate of 10 candidates vying for two of these two seats. There are 343 sensitive polling booths out of 2,562, of which 85% were in the militant hit Garo Hills region and classified as hypersensitive. Among the top contenders for these seats are NPP Chief P.A. Sangma, Congress MP Vincent Pala and former student leader Paul Lingdo. P.A. Sangma held the Tula seat 8 out of 10 times, while the Congress won the Shillong seat 7 times between 1977 and 2009. Since 1996, the Congress candidate consistently won the Shillong seat. In Manipur, 10 candidates including a woman are in fray for the outer Manipur seat. A little more than 9 lakh voters will decide their fate. In Nagaland, Chief Minister Nifu Rio will contest the Lok Sabha polls against Congress candidate K.V. Pusa. NPF is a member of the BJP-led NDA. More than 1 lakh voters will cast their ballots to decide the fate of three candidates in the fray for the lone seat. Adequate security measurements have been taken to ensure free and fair polls. DC hopes the trend of high turnout will continue in this phase of voting as well. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, one seat in Mizoram was also scheduled to go to polls on Tuesday, but the election commission today changed the polling date for the one seat in the state. Polling will now be held on 11th of April. Here is report. A 72-hour statewide bond in Mizoram forced the election commission to defer the polling date in the state. Mizoram will now go to polls to choose a representative for its low Lok Sabha seat on Friday instead of Wednesday. As per the new schedule, voting in Mizoram will take place on 11th April. The by poll to Rang Turzo assembly seat will also take place on the same day. Repolling, if any, will be held on 14th of April. The decision to defer the polling date was taken after a statewide ban was called to protest against the exercise of franchise by brew voters in six relief camps in Tripura through postal ballots. 
The election commission, however, has decided that provision would be made during future elections for exercise of franchise within the state of Mizoram by approved voters living in Tripura but enrolled in the voter list of Mizoram. Due to the ban, not a single polling party left the district headquarters for their places of poll duty yesterday. The month was called off by the Mizoram Joint NGO Coordination Committee soon after the election commission and the state government agreed to their demands. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. And for more on this, we'll go across to our correspondent, Pranav Goswami, who's joining us from Delhi. Pranav, uh, Congress and the regional parties like uh, NPP, NPF, they have dominance in the northeastern uh, states. And as far as BJP is concerned, its presence is minimal in the region. So what are the prospects of these parties in these elections? You rightly said, at least uh, out of four states, uh, three states, uh, Congress seems to be in a very strong position uh, in Manipur, uh, in Meghalaya and in Anuchar, Arunachal Pradesh. Those three states, uh, Congress has been ruling. And in Nagaland, uh, a regional party, NPF, has been uh, ruling for uh, more than 10 years. So we can say that in three states, uh, Arunachal, Meghalaya and in Manipur, Congress performance has been very good in, uh, in past elections. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh will go for uh, Lok Sabha poll along with assembly uh, election because uh, Arunachal state uh, cabinet uh, had recommended uh, for uh, dissolution of the uh, assembly for holding uh, uh, elections along uh, assembly election along with Lok Sabha. So we can say that Congress uh, will be very optimistic and Congress will be hoping uh, to right. get uh, more seats from these three states at least. And uh, Pranav, uh, what are the issues which the political parties are trying to address? Uh, development is always a very big issue in, in, in northeastern states. They always look at center for their development work. Uh, in northeastern states, they are uh, lacking with basic infrastructure and there has been so many other issues also. Some national issues are also going to be very crucial like price right. hike or like corruption. And apart from uh, this, uh, northeastern states uh, have been uh, facing uh, insurgency problems. So these are the main issues right. which are going to be uh, very important in, in this election. elections. Thank you so much Prana for giving us that uh, ground report and moving on campaigning for the seats going to ports in the third phase of Lok Sabha polls on Thursday came to an end at 5 p.m. today. Electioneering continued through the day as political bigwigs addressed back-to-back -back rallies in different states. BJP's Prime Ministerial candidate Narendra Modi addressed rallies in Kasselgur in Kerala and Kopal in Karnataka. Party patriarch L.K. Adwani also addressed a rally in Tiruvannanthapuram. Congress President Sonia Gandhi also held public meetings in Kerala and Karnataka, while BSP Supremo Mayavati held a rally in Madhya Pradesh. Twenty seats in Kerala and nine seats in Madhya Pradesh will go to polls on Thursday out of the 92 seats scheduled for the third phase. And the tussle between the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee and Election Commission has escalated in the last 24 hours. A day after the poll panel directed the removal of the eight officials from poll duty, the state government today requested EC to reconsider its decision. However, the commission is looking for options available under the Model Code of Conduct to take further action. The panel is entitled to suspend polls in few areas if the state government doesn't comply. Just one week before the Lok Sabha polls in West Bengal, the Chief Minister of the state has decided to take the Election Commission head-on. The Chief Minister is in no mood to follow the orders of the poll panel to transfer eight district officials ahead of the polls. The Commission has received complaints against these officials and ordered removal of five SPs, a district magistrate and two ADMs. Key rivals of the ruling TMC were quick to counter Mamata Banerjee for defying the Election Commission's order. Left leaders raised questions on the Chief Minister's open defiance against a constitutional body like the Election Commission. She is playing with fire. She has declared a war against the Constitution of India. It is not a dispute between State Election Commission and the State Government. It is a confrontation with the constitutionally constituted uh, Election Commission who is totally empowered with the administration after the code of conduct comes into operation. BJP also shot its punches against the chief minister who accused the EC of favoring few parties. 
ये बहुत ही गंभीर बात है पहली बार हिंदुस्तान के इतिहास में हुआ लेट अस सी वट हैपन्स क्योंकि जब भी कभी इलेक्शन कमीशन को इतनी पावर्स हैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में कि वो कोई भी इस समय जो भी उनका ऑर्डर होगा मानना पड़ता ये उचित नहीं है चुनाव आयोग और चुनी हुई सरकार के बीच मतभेद नहीं होना चाहिए चुनाव आयोग चुनाव के दौरान जो कहता है उसका पालन करना चाहिए Meanwhile, the Chief Secretary of the West Bengal Government has written to the Election Commission explaining the state government's stand after the EC order Mamata Banerjee defied to abide by it. <laughs> but the election commission has not responded to the letter former advisor to election commission k j rao told rajya sabha tv that the election commission may consider the option to postpone elections in affected areas legal expert and former attorney general of india p p rao who appeared for a similar case in mohinder singh gill versus chief election commissioner in 1978 says that the chief minister is entitled to know the action taken by the election commission but cannot object to it chief minister is entitled to be consulted but during the elections mm. whatever the election commission wants to be done mm. in regard to the transfer of officers mm. on the basis of complaints received the chief minister has to accept mm. the mandate of the election commission mm. the first phase of lok sabha polls in west bengal may witness the impact of the stand off but the election commission is keen on implementing its order the poll panel has asked its state wing to seek response from authorities and end the log jam The standoff between West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee and Election Commission of India is taking tough sides. Election Commission may consider an alternative option. With camera person Siddharth Rajkumar Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. And Congress has finally come out with the name of the candidate who will contest from the crucial Varanasi seat in Uttar Pradesh. Local MLA Ajay Rai has been given the opportunity to put up a challenge against BJP's prime ministerial candidate Narendra Modi and Aam Aadmi Party's candidate Arvind Kejriwal. The party had so far so far maintained to put up a stiff challenge for Modi from Varanasi by picking a strong candidate. But finally it has pinned its hope on the newcomer who has been formally associated with the bjp till 2009 rai is the congress mla from pindra near varanasi and belongs to the bhumihar community the aam aadmi party today announced the name of the candidate who will take on bjp's prime minister till nominee narendra modi and congress's madhusudan mistry from the vadodara lok sabha seat the party picked sunil dikambar kulkarni to contest from the crucial seat kulkarni is a mechanical engineer by profession and has been associated with the party right from its inception meanwhile the party also suffered a setback today when its candidate from raibareli former high court judge fakhruddin with true from the fray the reason for his withdrawal are not yet known the party is now likely to announce social worker archana shrivastava as its candidate from raibareli to contest against congress president sonia gandhi The Supreme Court has said that it will consider the plea to defer the April 10th polling in Gautam Buddh Nagar Lok Sabha seat in view of defection of Congress candidate to BJP. The matter will be heard on Friday, a day after the seat goes to polls. The controversy erupted after Congress candidate Ramesh Chand Tomar switched over to BJP a few days ago. The seat is set to go uncontested for the Congress as the date for nomination as well as withdrawal was over when Tomar switched parties if the apex court refuses to pass any order on the plea tomar's name will appear on the electronic voting machine next to the congress's symbol and in a major setback to bjp ahead of the april 10th elections former union minister and senior leader ashok pradhan joined samajwadi party today pradhan who has served as former national general secretary of the bjp has been given the same post in the samajwadi party pradhan was four time mp from khurja and had been union minister of state holding food and distribution ministry and many others ashok pradhan has accused bjp of trading lok sabha tickets pradhan has also claimed that there is resentment in the party where a number of groups have been formed 
An FIR has been registered against Union Minister Beni Prasad Verma in Baljrampur today for violating the Model Code of Conduct. The action was taken over his controversial remarks against BJP's Prime Ministerial nominee Narendra Modi at a rally on April 1st. Taking cognizance of the statement, the district administration has lodged a NFIR and has sent the report to the Election Commission as well. This is the second case of violation of the Model Code by the Union Minister. Another case was lodged against him on March 31st in Gunda district. And with that, a time for a short break. More election news on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. Ahead of polling in parts of Odisha, we look at the tribal population in the Niamgiri Hills area in the state that has been fighting corporate forces for years now. This is the epicenter of the development versus environment debate in India. Here is a report. Kalahandi Odisha, once known for starvation deaths. For more than a decade, the primitive communities of some 9,000 Dongriyas and Kutyakond tribes here have been waging a war against bauxite mining in Niamgiri Hills by the Vedanta group. Vedanta has the tacit support of the state's politicians. The tribes want their deity Niam Raja to be left undisturbed. They fear ecological destruction and the drying up of streams. Protests have taken the shape of a global green movement. How much mining this country needs and for what? At what cost? And that nobody reflects, nobody thinks. Everybody thinks the people are a hodl. You know, this way they are thinking. And now at least they will be compelled to think what actually we need, how much we need and at what cost. You know, all these questions which we have ignored over the years, we will be forced to reflect on. In 2010, the UP government had withdrawn clearances earlier granted to the bauxite mining project as it violated the Forest Rights Act and other environment protection laws. Watchers say Vedanta may now have to look for an alternative mining site to feed its alumina refinery at Lanjigar. The refinery was made with the Odisha government. It was made with 150 million tons of bauxite. So, Odisha government जो OMC ओडिशा माइनिंग कॉरपोरेशन ने वो नियम की रिमाइंस को वहाँ से बक्सेट निकाल के बेदान को देने के लिए वो प्लान में था। ऑलरेडी आपको पता है स्टेज वन क्लीयरेंस भी हो गया था, लेकिन स्टेज टू क्लीयरेंस के बाद कुछ प्रॉब्लम हुआ 2010 को MOF से कुछ रिजेक्शन आया। इमेजेस ऑफ़ आदिवासी प्रोटेक्टिंग � Odisha is now proposing that mining lessees pay for the development of tribal communities. Industry में आपको मालूम है direct indirect employment होता है तो जरूर रोजगार मिलेगा मेरे मेरे ख्याल से रोजगार मिलेगा मैं तो बोला हूँ मैं खुद एक industry से काम कर के आया हूँ अगर industry नहीं होता तो आज मैं भी minister नहीं बन पाता हूँ. Niamgiri is a wake-up call. Local opposition to mega mining, power and manufacturing projects raises the need to find an alternative eco-friendly development paradigm. Nilo Vyasa's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And you can watch a detailed report titled Battleground Niamgiri on Agenda 2014 at 10.30 p.m. And uh, Sikkim will be having elections to both the Lok Sabha as well as the State Assembly. In 2009, the state created a unique record in politics when the local Sikkim Democratic Front Party won all the local Lok Sabha and Assembly seats, completely wiping out the opposition. But this time, the picture is a little different. Here is report. Captivating scenery, fascinating valleys. The Himalayan state of Sikkim is among the best tourist destinations in the Northeast, unruffled in its majesty, much like its politics. 
since 1994, one party, the Sikkim Democratic Front, has dominated the political scene. It won all four elections. Creating history in 2009 by winning all 32 assembly seats and the lone one Lok Sabha seat. The crushing victory gave Chief Minister Pawan Kumar Chamli his fourth term. Sikkim Garibi Mukta Rajya Hongi Hongi, Begari Mukta Rajya Hongi, Sakshar Rajya Hongi, or Organic State Hongi. In 1994, the SDF won 19 seats. The tally rose to 25 in 1999 and still further to 31 in 2004. 2009 completed a clean sweep of 32 seats. The single party dominance of the SDF can be attributed to the failure of the opposition, Sikkim Rashtriya Dal, to connect with the people. It has always been the regional parties which have played uh, the stellar role in Sikkim politics. People of Sikkim have had, uh, did not have the exposure uh, to the national media or to the national politics scenario. Although both the BJP and Congress are also in fray, the leaders admit that fighting the SDF on its turf is a tough task. Local people have more sentiment for the local people, uh, local party. Yet, but gradually now the people will start changing their mind. आइए जितना पब्लिक है वो लोग सबको समझ में आ गया कि जितना भी रिजनल पार्टी लोग हैं वो लोग जीतकर एमपी लोग को भेजने से भी उधर जाकर दिल्ली में राष्ट्रीय पार्टी और राष्ट्रीय कंग्रेस या राष्ट्रीय सरकार के साथ मिलना ही पड़ेगा। but the challenge to the SDF this time is coming from a rebel. Prem Singh Gol left the party to form his own Sikkim Kranti Kari Morcha party. बीस परसेंट बीत गए लेकिन कोई भी वादा पूरा नहीं हुआ। बस ऐसा ही पूरा करप्शन बढ़ने लगा, पूरा बेरोजगारी बढ़ने लगा, और यह सुसाइड बढ़ने लगा, और सिक्किम का जो हालात था डेवलपमेंट का हालात बिगड़ने लगा। इसलिए मैंने सोचा ये दल से अलग होकर जो जो पार्टी कोई जनता का काम नहीं करेगा तो उसमें क्यों बैठे? And the incumbency is the biggest rival for the SDF this time. Many regions complain of lack of employment, basic facilities, and corruption. Our government wants to take some changes and new changes. For Chief Minister Pawan Kumar Chamling, another win would make him the longest serving Chief Minister, beating the previous record of former West Bengal Chief Minister Jyoti Basu. From last 20 years, nobody could defeat Pawan Kumar Chamling in Sikkim. This time also he is not facing any challenges either from BJP or from Congress. But he is facing serious challenges from his own ex-loyalist who has formed his new party against the policies of Pawan Kumar Chamli. In Gang Talk with camera person Siddharth, this is Pranav Goswami, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have for you in this edition of India Ports. News and programming continues on Rajya Sabha TV. Stay tuned.